Reconciliation. It's a powerful word. By all means, a good intent. But how do we move forward? It's like the little things have changed. In 30 years, little things have changed. And, and I don't know whether it's enough sometimes. Or well, how do we actually change things so we're thinking differently, you know? And that's a challenge. That's a real challenge. I still get that you don't look Aboriginal. I still get asked to be more Aboriginal. You get tired of having to educate people all the time. We see what's wrong. Society knows what's wrong in this world. It's really disappointing to be still being called a lot of names and it's just, yeah, sometimes emotional, sometimes emotional. The experiment began by selecting a group of non-Aboriginal artists whose job it was to depict an Aboriginal member of their community through the expression of art. Non-Indigenous artists working with Indigenous people is always a beautiful thing. Um, I actually can't wait and I'm very excited to see what they come up with. It's really interesting because when I look at the way an artist thinks, I think it's really cool because they actually, they, they think a little bit deeper around a person. You know, the portrait doesn't just capture who you are physically, there's a, there's a story that's coming out from that canvas. I think it will be really well received by the community, Aboriginal community and the wider community as a good step towards reconciliation. And there's a lot of learning in there. So people are going to change through this process, which is beautiful because change is what it's all about these days. The first step involved bringing our artists and sitters together to find out who they were paired with and who they were going to spend the next few months getting to know. Uh, I was really nervous coming into this. I didn't really know. Um, I was still in school, but I had to come and show my support. I've got a few ideas in mind, but I think that's definitely going to change and shift as we probably talk and get to know each other a little bit more. I'm Ashton. I'm in year 12, still at Seaton High School. Um, from Sajina, Wurrungu. My dream job is basically uh, a tugboat driver. Basically love the water. Um, I live off the water sometimes. I live in the water. <laughs> yeah, I love baseball a lot. I still I love it. Yeah, that's what I love to do. My grandfather he used to come to my games. Um, every game, every training. Uh, he used to, he used to push me to get the training and be parts. So that's why I'm still push myself to get training. And it's, a bit hard, yeah. Got here with me every time I, I, I got up to play in bat, and that's why I'm, I like it a lot. Uh, the challenges I faced was racism, uh, being stared at a lot, um, getting called a lot of names, like a lot of names. It's really hard to get through that, but every day I try to get through it. I, mean, I just want to be out there and try and improve myself to make it to the next level, but. When people call you names and that, it just puts you down even more. For me, you know, I've, I've, I love everybody, every culture. But for them to hate, hate us back, I just don't know why. I, I don't know what we've done wrong. My grandfather wanted me to be better than my opponent. He always said to me, you can't be better than your opponent. So that's what basically kept me going. I love my family, definitely. Uh, my connection with them is just really good, you know. Like, I go back to Juno, I see everybody there. Family's really everything to me. In my head, for some reason, I have this concept of a really old man with lots of wrinkles. So it couldn't really have been more wrong, could I? I'm Ricky Miller-Wilson, born and raised here in Adelaide. Um, but I'm a Naranga Adimatana Wurrunga woman, single mum of two boys, so nine and five. So that's busy enough. But I'm also a health and wellbeing program facilitator. Um, with a company called Sonda and we're based in Port Adelaide. But I also have a small business as well in, in the same kind of field. So, you know, holistic health and fitness and well-being. But um, this one is a bit of my own twist on it, which is keeping culture um, at its core. In 2018, I was successful in being selected. Um, so they had six men and six women from across the country, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and it was for the Indigenous Marathon Foundation. That was extremely hard and extremely challenging, um, but I was successful in making the squad. Uh, early November 
we headed over to New York and we ran the New York Marathon. Like many people do when they run a marathon, they say there's this wall, invisible wall, that they all talk about. Um, and I did hit that wall. It was all spirit. That was the only thing that carried my body to finish that marathon. And um, yeah, it was such a surreal moment when I did see those flags and see the finish line and saw all the rest of my team like waiting for me. Like, and it was just like this energy just come out of nowhere. And I was like sprinted across the line. You know, everything in your mind is saying, stop, stop, just, just give up. Don't worry about it, it's too hard. But then this, that's that mental and that spiritual, that fight in us, in all of us, that's just like, no, you've got this. You did not you know, come this far to only come this far. My expectation of the project was to come in and um, share a bit about myself and uh, meet an artist who's gonna be doing the painting of me and hopefully um, we can um, you know, spend some time together and, and learn from each other. Yeah, my name's Shane Cook. Um, I was born here on Ghana country, but my family can be traced all the way back to the Koa and Woolly Woolly people of central Queensland. Since then, I've gone on to finish school and become a mentor and now working in schools and I'm also a full-time artist as well. My artwork kind of goes across various mediums, so tattooing, uh, aerosol art, I'm studying art psychotherapy. So how I'm going to approach capturing Shane is we had a chat last week about where his lineage comes from and what who he is a little bit. So we're talking about the aspect of the warrior. When I was quite young, actually, he was in an incident where I got burnt and I ended up spending an extended period amount of time in hospital. And, and that's where I really started to um, learn about, you know, my family history, about being an Aboriginal young man and, you know, seeing photos of these Aboriginal uh, warriors or dancers and um, just seeing how strong they looked. Uh, that was something that, was, that really drew me into wanting to learn more about my culture. Obviously overcoming that part of my life, there's some aspects of you know having to be a warrior to kind of get through that. And then I just added the idea of smoke because we talked about using fire or smoke because he has some history with fire and he really wanted smoke in the image. I just knew that I was going to be a part of this crazy project of making a little film and having portraits and I thought it sounded really cool. <laughs> so my name's Aitika Okula Sanderson Bromley. Um, I'm Adnamatna from the Flinders Ranges, Naranga from the Oak Peninsula and Yali Andy Wangunu from the Simpson Desert. I am an Aboriginal artist and dancer. I'm studying at uni doing a Bachelor of Arts with a major of Anthropology. I do education in schools, doing dance, art and like cultural workshops. And I really enjoyed Aitika's openness in talking to me a lot about her culture and her ideas and the place that she most calls home. So we're talking about maybe going home to my country and explore up there and I can show her around. She can see kind of what I see and what my life is when I'm back home. Sort of establish sort of where Rodney fits into uh, community, what he's interested in, and then um, the more I get to know him, I'll come up with a, a plan. Well, I'm Rodney Welch. I'm an Aboriginal man. I'm an, a Narunga Aboriginal man, and my family comes from the York Peninsula of South Australia. You know, my mother always took me back to the, um, you know, to Point Piers or across to Raukan, which are, you know, basically Aboriginal missions. So growing up, my mother always took us to these places. I think I'm a really lucky guy, honestly. Um, all my professional career, uh, has been where I've worked with the Aboriginal community, sitting with elders at a table for 30 years on a, on a fortnightly basis, talking through community and what's going on and how we manage things. For me, going into a courtroom, because my, my life is about justice, and where does Rodney Welch sit in justice? And it's really strange, because when I first started in justice, I was this little black fella, you know, where I've come from a family of alcohol, come from a family of crime, I've come from a family where my brothers have been locked up more than they were probably out at that time, you know. And so all that sort of stuff, thinking, here's Rodney Welch working in, working in a justice space. How weird is that? My role right now is really about Aboriginal outcomes. You know, how do we improve the, the awareness of Aboriginal outcomes to the broader non-Aboriginal community? I've had opportunity to step up the ladder, but the, the, the more you step up a ladder, the further you get away from grassroots work. Well, I'd like to meet Margaret a few times and, and learn, really, really know her story. I relate to the Ngarindjeri. Um, I was 11 years old when my grandmother passed and said she was the oldest living Ghana woman at the time. 
I've dabbled in all sorts. I think my journey would have started when I was eight with CASM, Centre for Aboriginal Studies in Music. Um, I played in one of the first Aboriginal orchestras. Culture's always been in me, I know no other way. It's my backbone. Um, and I thrive to educate. I love meeting new people. And like for me, a social butterfly, I go out there, I smile at everybody, and regardless of whether they smile back, but it just takes that one person that's toffee nose that wants to look down her nose at me and that just sets the whole pace of it all backwards. My family growing up, um, they're, not, um, they're not racist. They think that we've got problems, us older ones, because of how we deal with it. Um, yeah, but then I don't know whether they recognise that their Aboriginality today either, as children and how they'll grow to become adults with it. It's only until we got called down the stage, you know, oh, this is, this is the speaker and this is the artist, you know, and you go, oh, great. I, I am the Aboriginal culture broker at St John's Youth Service, here for close to seven years now, come from a stolen background, so um, I didn't really know who I was till about 36, so I was taken as a baby. 17 I joined the Defence Force, I was in the Air Force for, for 21 years and retired and then went into the airlines for another 16 years. About that 36 year mark I started thinking, well who am I, what am I doing? I, I, I knew I was adopted but I didn't actually know who I was so it was about finding out who I was so I, I got in contact with the adoption agency in Perth and you know, so oh, this is my name and, she, and the woman said, I've just heard that recently. And I said, well, there's only three of us in Australia, but what had actually happened is that my birth mother was looking for me within that month period to, to re reconnect, you know, so yeah. So I caught up with Alex at the church where he used to work and we went for a walk into the parklands with his family and he showed me some of the special trees that were there, which was really interesting, um, particularly like the shopping tree. So it was sort of like, he'd, wouldn't go to the shops, like this tree would provide so much of what you needed, which I thought was a really nice idea. Alex is such a nice guy and he's so friendly and welcoming. But I really liked this particular picture because he looked very strong and he looked kind of like a guardian of the parklands or something like that. So I, I don't know, I thought it was a very cool photo and yeah, he looks fantastic. I'm a Bath and woman from far western New South Wales. So Ghana country for me has been a healing place and a place where me and my daughter can be safe and we build a beautiful life together. I think identity continues to be strengthened over time and I found a way to strengthen that through creating songs in community with children, with the Tichikala women, with women in prisons, uh, song people out in the community. I'll, I'll write a song with anybody and that's just, uh, yeah, it's really strengthening. And I also very much want it to be about a collaboration with her art and mine. That's why I'm going to get her to write on the canvas her lyrics. That's how my life flows through through melody and, and connecting with people, you know, musically. I've got a number of uh, projects coming up this year. I've just finished a couple of weeks of songwriting with the Tichikala Women's Choir. They, that community is an hour and a half out of Alice Springs and we sat down for a couple of weeks to write four songs in Pinandara language and that was incredible to, to spend some time with some of Australia's most powerful song women. While the artists were busy developing the various portraits, we wanted to hear their thoughts on reconciliation. I mean, I, I want to make a difference, I want to contribute but am, am I allowed to? Uh, am I crossing boundaries? Would, would that be welcomed or am I going to be seen as interfering in some way? Particularly with my art and dance, I've seen how people, how well people receive it. And through my work doing cultural education, I've seen how um, willing people are to learn and how keen people are to learn. To me, reconciliation is about coming together. It's about collaboration and it's about mutual respect. I would mould you out of love instead of forging you in pain. Give me chills, that's beautiful. To identify as an Aboriginal woman in 2021 with this skin still challenges people's notions of 
what Aboriginal people are or who we are, what we look like. Obviously going into it with the right intentions is really important, but you don't want to be too afraid to do anything or too afraid to say anything. Oh, I think a lot of people just put it in a too hard basket, like, it's too hard, I don't know how to, I just, I just won't engage with it, I won't do it, I won't be involved. From a reconciliation point, if we're talking about relationships and working together and making sure we're both being heard in our voice, we're not doing that when it comes to outcomes with the justice system, child protection system, you know, social justice systems, all those, you know, health and wellbeing. Those things aren't really being heard as clearly. So we're still doing a lot of the band-aid, I would say a lot of the band-aid approaches to dealing with Aboriginal issues in this country, yeah. People are feeling like this kind of social change is enough and, you know, they're feeling like, oh, I'm a good person now, you know, like I, I believe in it and, you know, all of that, but it, I mean, it's easier to say it without doing anything. And things like reconciliation is the heart's in the right place, but sometimes when we come down to the, the structure of it, it's just like, is it to tick a box? Is it to, for people to feel less guilty about things? Because for me personally, like when reconciliation week is over, we're still black. We're still Aboriginal, we still have to live with the things that are not fair. And everybody can see that it's not fair, but we live in a society where people are too afraid to, step, to stand up. What shocks me the most is that a separation or um, a discrimination just over people's skin colour, which is, I don't get it, I really don't get it. They don't see the human behind the colour of the skin or something, yeah. But it's come a long way from when my elders were young obviously and they went through a lot more and they fought a lot harder to get to where we are now and now it's up to the young people to keep fighting to move forward. Now despite the nerves that most, if not all, artists had, the inevitable time had come to present their final work of art. I am feeling incredibly nervous at the prospect of giving this to Nancy. At this moment, yeah, really scared that she won't like it. Ah. I'm very nervous, a little bit nervous. Yeah, for me the same, a bit excited though to yeah. see it. <laughs> the making of the art is really fun, but to see someone's reaction when it's their likeness that you're trying to portray, and whether or not they like it, it's like so nerve wracking. Ah, oh, uh, really. Really nervous. Ah, it's gonna be really cool seeing it. Hey! <laughs> Hello. How are you? Here we go. This is so dramatic. It's a little. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Oh my gosh. There you are. That is. That's crazy. That is so good. Thank you so much. I love it. Okay. Yeah. That's just beautiful. Right. <laughs> it's you. No way. Yeah, yeah. Actual? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> nah, this can't be real. <gasps> oh my god! I love it! What are you talking about? <laughs> that is so beautiful! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, far out. Oh, gosh. I'm not looking for. Well, I know it's me. <laughs> it better oh, be you. Oh, well. wow. It certainly is. One thing I'm really proud of is, like, I love my eyes because of my dad's eyes. You've just captured everything perfectly. Oh, it's a shock. It's a shock. It's <laughs> a shock or a bad shock? Oh, it's a good shock. Uh, reborn are my ancestors. They walk through me, I dance through them. That was my, I just wrote that right I know, I know, and I loved it. When I read that, I thought, I've got to go in the picture it somewhere. Just, it's so fitting. She inspired me in a way I didn't expect. On a good day, it would have been difficult to kind of get me to look at myself in this way and feel, feel like I do right now. But on a bad day, almost impossible, and yet it's just cut through. All of that. There wasn't a minute that I wasn't learning. There wasn't a minute that I wasn't engaged. <laughs> you can't help but love someone when you're in someone's company. So we need to be together more. Should we do a um, Nancy and Cheryl? Sign at Nancy and yeah. Cheryl. Yeah, that'd be nice.
I was told to call Alex Uncle Alex and then I felt like, oh, should I or shouldn't I? Is that like allowed or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I'm learning a lot more about the culture. Thanks so much. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, this is, wow, this is, I just can't get over this. This is so cool. Have you got any words? <laughs> nah, got no words at all. No words to explain it. I didn't ever think that this would come about, not for me anyways. Um, I feel almost like a celebrity. <laughs> for somebody to have spent hours and hours looking at your face and spending hours before that, you know, hearing your story and trying to connect with you as a person, to see that reflected on a canvas is pretty overwhelming and beautiful feeling, yeah. They've all done exceptionally well, you know. Brilliant, brilliant works of art that they've done. And to be able to capture people in just their everyday poses, it was fantastic, you know. So they've really sort of listened to what was asked of them and, you know, what they've, what they've come up with is fantastic. Couldn't ask for a better night.